I just finished baking one of my new favorite breads, caramelized onion gouda and herb sourdough. This bread came to life a few weeks ago when I was a part of the Ontario Tourism Summit in New Hamburg, Ontario, and I stopped by Mountain Oak Gouda where they make the cheese. I couldn't help but buy a big chunk of it to bring it back to the baking studio and bake this bread. Now we've been baking this for my bread group for a couple of weeks now, and it's become a favorite, so I decided to make a video showing you how to make it. Except this time, we're gonna hand mix the dough, as I have a lot of videos machine mixing, and I've been getting a lot of requests for a hand mixed dough. So let's get started and make this bread. We're gonna start by mixing our dough, and we're gonna do a sort of fermento lees. So we're gonna use our ripe starter, flour, water, mix it together until just combined. Then we'll allow that to rest before we mix in the salt. We're gonna add the water today in two stages, starting off with our water one at 554 grams. And this water is about 27 degrees. It's quite warm in my house right now, middle of summer. But because I'm hand mixing, we're not gonna generate a lot of heat in the dough. Next, we're gonna add our ripe starter. I've got some starter here that I fed last night. And because it's quite warm in my house, I did a really no low inoculation, meaning not a lot of starter for the flour and water. I've got a separate video showing how I feed and maintain my starter and a lot of other videos showing how to do the build and reach this point. So if you're unsure, check, check the other link in the description. And we're gonna add in 143 grams. Next up with my hand, I'm just gonna dissolve the starter in the water. And then we're gonna add our flour to this. I'm using 673 grams of bread flour and 119 grams of rye flour. That's 85% bread flour and 15% rye. With your hand like a claw, just start to pinch through the dough, mixing this together as best you can. All we're trying to do here, the goal of this, is to just get the dry flour dissolved, and then we're gonna let it rest. So I'm gonna just take some water to get the dough off my hands. I'm gonna use a wet scraper now, scrape down the sides of the bowl, and I'm just gonna go through this one more time, making sure that I don't have any dry bits of flour left. This dough is fairly firm and stiff, but we're gonna add more water to it later and it's gonna be beautiful. Okay. Once you've got to this point, I'm just gonna throw a towel over this and we're gonna let this sit for about 30 minutes. Now, my preference for when I do the autolies with Levin is to keep it between 20 to 60 minutes and we're gonna do about 30 today. Then we're gonna come back and mix in the salt and the water too. I'll see you in half an hour. Okay, 30 minutes are up and we're gonna add our salt and our water too. I'm helping out with the salt in. Juniper's gonna put the salt in. Now, a lot of times I will add the salt then the water too. The dough's a little stiffer because we're gonna have to hold up to all the cheese. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the salt we're gonna put the water two on top and we're gonna to mix them in together. So first we're gonna add 14 grams of salt. Can you just sprinkle that all over? Great. Next, we're gonna add about 79 grams of water. And this is probably not the best way to do this. You should measure it separately so you don't spill it. I'm gonna get rid of the scale in this bowl because I don't need it. Now we're gonna to start to mix this in like a claw. So we're just gonna pinch through the dough and Juniper's gonna pinch through the dough and we're gonna try and absorb all the water and the salt into the dough. How does it feel, Juniper? Really. Is it extra squishy? It's squishy and it's gooey. <laughs> <laughs> and we're now adding salt and water. So it is gonna take a little bit of work to bring this back together. Stretchy, stretchy, stretchy. Squishy, squishy. Juniper, what's your favorite kind of bread? Like it. And you got a video showing me how to make it. We'll leave a link in the description below. All right, so our dough is starting to come together now. You can see when I pick it up, it's not super mm. developed. It just looks a bit mm. kind of sticky. But as this sits, it's gonna really come together. I'm gonna scrape my bowl down with the scraper 
And I'm gonna give this, and to make sure that all of that water is absorbed, the dough shouldn't look wet at all. And if you've got a little helper and they need it, it goes twice as fast. So once the dough has come together, you don't see any wet bits, you don't feel any salt, you can pick it up, turn it over. You can take your dough scraper, scrape down that bowl. And now we're gonna let this bulk ferment. Bulk fermentation being the point from after mixing to shaping for about two and a half hours. During that time, we're gonna give it one fold and then we're gonna laminate in the cheese and the herbs. So we're gonna spread the dough thin, put the cheese and the herbs and roll it back up. So let's put a towel on this. Can you, can you throw this on top? Okay, watch out. Throw a towel on here. Set your timer. I'm just gonna set it for the total bulk. It's gonna be about two and a half to three hours. I'm just gonna put three and we're gonna start that. And we'll see you in about a half an hour for the first fold. Let's go, kiddo. Come on. Ah. We are about 30 minutes into our bulk fermentation, and we're gonna give this dough its first fold. Folding is a great way to regulate temperature and increase dough strength. So to start, you're gonna loosen the dough with a wet dough scraper. Lightly wet your hands. Loosen the dough in the bowl, and then give it a good stretch up, turn and just work your way around the bowl. And I usually go one full rotation to the point where I can pick the dough up and it is pretty strong in my hands. I can almost ball it and you'll notice the dough is not really sticking because I've got water in my hands. I'm gonna place it back in there and you should really see a big difference at this point. The dough is rounded in the bowl. It sticks together. There's not bits of dough everywhere. We're gonna cover this and let it sit for another 30, 40 minutes and we're gonna laminate in our cheese. We are about one hour into the bulk fermentation and it's almost time to give this dough its second fold or in this case, lamination. First, we're gonna need to prep some ingredients. So we've got our cheese. We're gonna cube this up, quite simple. We're gonna just cut off the rind. Now I've left this out of the fridge so that it can be room temp and it doesn't affect our dough temperature. And then we're just gonna cut little, let's try it first. So good. We want nice cubes here. So I'm gonna cut some strips and then we're gonna cut these in half. Now you could go smaller than this, you could go bigger, it depends on what you're looking for. I like a nice disbursement of cheese throughout my loaf. So I go small, but not small enough that the cheese disappears and melts away to nothing. And we only need about 200 grams. Now a little bit over is fine. So I think what we'll do is we'll go there. That's 250. And the rest I'm just gonna put aside for now. Okay, so we need to get some herbs. Now, I've had a garden for most of my life, including when I was younger, and that sort of carried on. And I've got a pretty good one going on here at my house. You can see it behind me here. And so we've got tomatoes, herbs, all sorts of peppers. Most importantly, I love that my kids can just kind of come out and pick stuff from the garden. The first thing I want to grab here is just a little bit of this flowering thyme. Uh, you can see it's got the flowers on it. It's just really nice and fragrant. The next thing we're gonna grab is a little bit of this parsley here. So we're just gonna cut a bit of this. And now admittedly, parsley is a little bit of a filler here, but I also have a ton of herbs in the garden and I kinda wanna use everything. Now I've got a few more out front, so let's go see if we can grab some tarragon and some oregano. And here we're in my front. We've got a beautiful little herb garden in the front here. We've got some flowering oregano and we've got some tarragon. We've also got pineapple sage, hyssop, chives and this big old sage and more sage here and cilantro so let's grab some of this tarragon just grab a little pinch of this okay not too much we'll also snag a little bit of this oregano with the beautiful flowers on it it's going to have a great flavor I, I think everyone's been through this you buy herbs for something you use a little bit and then the rest kind of gets wasted so my suggestion is if you have a garden of course grab it from the garden but don't be too caught up in what herbs you use you could use rosemary thyme oregano dill cilantro just use whatever you've got keep the percentage the same or even change them if you want a little bit more herb flavor or less you can also use dried herbs i would cut the a quantity down by about half 
but it works. Now let's go back inside and chop these up. It actually started pouring rain moments after I came inside. It's a really good thing we picked these when we did. Check this out. I do not want to be out there picking herbs right now. It is pouring. By the way, we've got the wood oven here. So if y'all want to see more wood oven videos. So we're going to get back into it here and I'm just going to pick these herbs down. I don't need the scale. We're going to pick these herbs down. There's some tarragon. Boom, boom. And now I'm just going to start to chop this up. So I'm going to roll this herb up like this and we're just going to chop these herbs. All right. Now, the next stage of this is going to be our lamination. I don't mean a lamination like a puff pastry or a croissant, although I guess I kind of do. We're going to laminate the herbs and the cheese into the dough. So what I'm going to do here is place my herbs and cheese aside. I'm actually going to mix them together. So we're going to put the herbs and the cheese together so some of those herbs coat the cheese. Okay. And then we're going to slightly moisten the table. So just to recap, we've done one fold at about 30 minutes into bulk fermentation. And now we have about an hour and a half left in our bulk ferment. And we're going to do our second fold, which is actually a lamination. So you're going to water the surface of your table just to prevent it from sticking. Get this out of the way. And then with wet hands, I'm just going to stretch the dough onto the table. And you can see how awesome this works. Look at that, okay? It really is gonna build a lot of strength and I do know a lot of bakers use this, home bakers anyways, it's not very practical in a professional setting when you're making a lot of them. But a lot of people now are doing this technique in place of folds as sort of a, a really hyper strength building fold. Now we're gonna spread our cheese and herbs evenly across the dough and I'm gonna try to get it everywhere. There's a little bit of loose herbs in the bottom, so what I'll try to do first is put the cheese all around because we want both loaves to have an equal amount of cheese. And then we'll just place the rest of the herbs. Now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna fold this up and place it back into our bowl. Okay, so I'm gonna lightly wet the scraper. I'm gonna loosen the dough and we're gonna fold the dough. There's two. And now we're just gonna roll this up, okay? See how strong that looks now? It almost looks like a pre-shape in some ways. Take the scraper, the bench scraper, bring this together, pick this back up, place it back in the bowl, and we're gonna let this ferment now for about another hour and 15 to an hour and a half, which will bring us to a total of about three hours bulk fermentation before we divide and shape this dough. So I'm gonna let it rest here with a towel. I'm gonna just watch the rain while I wait. Clean up and watch the rain. Time is up. Our dough has been bulk fermenting for three hours and it's now time to shape our dough. We're gonna need a plastic dough scraper, our bench scraper, and I've got a little bit of bread flour just inside of a banatone here. You can see, I would say, almost doubled in size. It's full of air bubbles all across the surface and it's also not sitting flat in the bowl. It's a little bit curved or domed. That's a really good sign that this dough has good strength, it's risen, it's fermented very well. One thing that's important here that I haven't talked too much about so far is the temperature of the fermentation. And so it's quite warm in my house right now. It's the middle of summer and this dough when I first mixed it was about 27.5. It's now come down to about 25.8 Celsius. So it's come down a little bit, but not dramatically. Uh, and it's just something to keep an eye on when you make your dough. Tracking temperature is very important. So I'm gonna use the bench scraper to grab one piece of dough here and throw it up onto my scale. That is 960 grams. And now I will have just a touch, 830. 
So I've got 960 and then this one is just a little bit less. So I'm gonna put a little piece of cheese there so I have two 900 gram loaves. To shape the bread, I'm gonna take the dough scraper and I'm just gonna use it to pull and round the dough on the table. I'm creating a little bit of tension and I'm rounding it into a ball. To show that again, we're just using the bench scraper to round and develop some tension on the surface or the exterior of the dough. You can see this one is, is really bulging with bits of cheese. I don't know if I maybe didn't balance it evenly here or if it's just on the surface, but it makes it a little harder. So if you do see the cheese ripping out, at this point I can just pat a little bit of flour on it and let it there. And now I'm gonna let these two doughs rest here for about 20 minutes. Time to final shape our dough. You can see the dough is relaxed on the table. It's rested a little bit. We're gonna use these shorter, fatter banatones today. I like the way that inclusion breads relax in them, but you could use anything um, this style works as well, the longer style. If you don't have any and you'd like to learn more about Banatones, I've got a really good video explaining how I use mine. We're gonna dust our Banatone. Now I'm using uh, tapioca flour mixed with a bit of rye here. Normally I use rice flour and rye, but I was out of rice flour and it was, to be honest, all I had, so I made it work. Um, sometimes you have to make it work. The next thing we're gonna do here is we are going to gently flour the top of your loaf. You don't want too much on there, just a little bit so that your hand doesn't stick. Release it from the table and flip it over. We're gonna place the floured side down on the table. So I'm just gonna stretch this dough out a little bit and I'm gonna pull the bottom down towards me and seal it into just under the middle. Then I'm gonna take the sides, stretch them out without tearing and make a little envelope, bring the middle down, and then I'm just gonna sort of cross what I call the arms here, working my way down the dough. You can see it's really stiff, so I really don't try to force it. And then I'm just gonna roll the dough over and pull it back onto itself. Now we'll do this one. Again, we're just going to gently flour the top of the loaf, flip it over, and you're gonna pull the bottom down towards you and seal. The sides can go out, seal, seal. The middle down, and then we're just gonna cross over the arms. If this part is really tight, this is a lower hydration dough with rye flour, so it's not highly extensible, just be very gentle. Then take the bottom and just sort of roll the dough up and over onto itself. Okay, so now that we've shaped both of our loaves, we've dusted our banatones, I'm gonna lightly flour the top of the loaf and then I'm just gonna pick it up and sort of fold it in half. So when I pick it up, you're gonna see there's a little bit of a wet side and it gets dry. Just gonna, oh, don't lose the cheese. Just gonna sort of fold it in half and place it into the banatone. And now you'll see there's no wet bits of dough any, well, a little bit here, but mostly none. Do that again here. We just want a little bit of flour there. Scoop it up. And you'll notice you've got some wetter spots on the side. We're just gonna fold that together, just enough to seal the wet spot there. Place it into the basket, and you'll see it'll relax a bit, but it kind of has a line down the middle, just like this one. There's a little bit of wet there. The dough feels nice and risen. It's full of air bubbles if you look closely. I'm gonna cover these breads with an old bag that I've been reusing. Just place it behind me beside the fridge. I'm gonna set a timer for 20 minutes. I'm gonna leave these out for 20 minutes. Then I'm gonna place them in the fridge where they'll rest overnight and we'll bake them off tomorrow. In the meantime, I'm gonna get cleaned up. Now, depending on how your dough is, um, I usually like to pull the dough out a few minutes before I bake it, maybe 20. So I'm gonna pull this out 
And this has been resting in the fridge since last night. You can see it's risen. Oh, someone's here for bread. Someone's at the front door. Be right back. You can see the dough has risen nicely. You can see little specks of herbs in there, big chunks of cheese. When I press into the dough, it springs back, but leaves a slight indent. What do you think, ready to bake? Yeah. Do you wanna give it the poke test? Yep, springs back. So we're gonna grab our Dutch oven. I've got my lamb here. For this bake, I'm gonna use a Challenger bread pan. This is my preferred way to bake at home. The other thing is, smoky. Haven't used this thing in a while. I don't bake in the Dutch oven very often because I have a deck oven in the basement, but we're going to do it anyways. So with this bread, I like to use a piece of parchment in the bottom because the cheese melts and it's going to smoke everywhere. So you're going to place the parchment and then you're just going to gently let the bread fall into here to score the bread. We're going to place the lamb on it on a slight angle and then give one clean cut right down the middle. Place your lid back onto the Dutch oven. And just for a little bit extra steam, I like to spray some water into here. Now this Dutch oven has been in the oven for 45 minutes at 500 degrees. I'm gonna fire the bread and drop it to 480. We're gonna let this go for about 16 minutes, then we'll remove the lid and have a look. All right, so it's halfway through the bake and we're gonna remove the lid from the Dutch oven. I always remove it away from me just in case the steam and this looks epic. It's gonna be a beautiful loaf. I'm gonna place this back in the oven for about 16 to 18 minutes. Let it color up, get nice and golden. Make sure that bottom's not getting too dark, which it's not perfect. Let's go. All right, so our bread is, our first bread anyways is done. It looks amazing. It's super hot, so I'm gonna to try to pick it up. It's not too dark on the bottom. It looks just right. That tray underneath, diffusing the heat, preventing it from burning. Now I haven't baked in a Dutch oven in a while. Normally I go a bit darker than this, but I think that's pretty good. Got some cheese oozing out. We should probably cut into this thing and see what it looks like inside. And that's a wrap for today. I hope you enjoyed making this bread with me. You can download the free Excel in the description below. You can also check out my website for the full written recipe. As always, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, any of the above helps my channel to grow and it helps other users find me. I will see you in the next video.